Good morning, folks. I get to say that because it's 11.59 a.m. We're going to start in approximately one minute. I wanted to welcome everybody today to the October 12th edition of the Washington County Public Affairs Forum. I have just a couple of quick announcements. First one was I was given just a little slip on my way up here. And for those of you who live in the Cedar Mill area, and for those of you who don't, because it's not exclusive, we have on October 18th, a Sunday from 1 to 4, the Cedar Mill Cider Festival coming up. And that'll be at 12, 12050 Northwest Cornell, and with parking at the Bible Church across. Boy, I feel like, I feel like no a... Apologies. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Virginia said. There's nothing political in this message, and I don't know. It depends on how much cider one drinks as to how political it could get. That's my opinion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we have with us the executive director of the West Side Economic Alliance. The West Side Economic Alliance has an interesting mission that I think it would be awfully hard for anybody who lives in this county to not support, and that's to try and create a positive, effective economic climate. With that, let me introduce the executive director, Ms. Pam Treese, and thank you so much for being here, Pam. Thank you. First of all, let me apologize. I, I have a cold, and I'm trying not to infect anybody here, and I may start coughing or need to excuse myself to uh, take care of issues, but other than that, um, things are fine. Things have been a bit busy. Um, I was on the phone this morning with one of my board members, in the car, hands-free, like, like we're all supposed to be doing, you know, and, and I reached into my purse to grab my uh, lipstick, only to find an avocado. And it took me a moment to realize that yesterday I had been shopping at the grocery store, and I must have put that avocado in my purse, and I did not pay for it at the QFC on Barnes and Miller. <laughs> so so uh, that, that's kind of the, the degree of uh, uh, busyness and kind of, you know, the, the state of affairs for not me, but all of us. And I know, I know we're all like that. This morning, I'm, I'm happy to be here, or I guess now by noon, I'm happy to be here. I've been speaking to you before. And when I came before, I was kind of looking at the notes from my last presentation, and it was all very much outlined and very, you know, static in terms of this is what we're going to do, here's where we are. I think I was about four or five months into the job at that time. So I appreciate your patience with me then, and I will appreciate your patience now, but my approach is going to be very different this morning. I wanted to talk to you casually about what we've been doing, what we've, what we've done, and how we are moving forward into the future. And I'd like this presentation to be as interactive as possible. So please, if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you have something you want to talk about, I'd like it if you just raise your hand and we can, we can have a discussion as well as a formal presentation. Actually, if, if I may, excuse me just for a second, let me remind folks that only paid up members of the forum can ask questions. And if you don't mind, right after the presentation would be the best time Folks will line up and ask their questions oh, at okay. that microphone right there. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, I, I had forgotten that we've got rules and we've got regulations in this organization, and it's my, my apologies for that. So I will end a little early so that we can line up those of you that have paid your dues and ask the appropriate questions. So I, I apologize. Um, we are, our organization is moving forward. We're really on full steam ahead. The mission of Westside Economic Alliance is to, is to encourage and to help develop the economic vitality of Washington County. That's a, that's a large statement. We have a public and a private board. Our board is made up of 30 individuals, six of whom are, uh, are from the public side. We have a very, uh, we had a very ingenious group that put together the West Side Economic Alliance because we, we talk about being a private public board, but the reality is we really have a private focus. That's, we represent the private sector first. And um, the way we do that, the way we combine the board effectively is that what we do is all board members have an equal vote, but we reach quorum only counting the private side. So there can never be a public suede vote, which is very uh, an interesting approach, and I think that the, 
the people who wrote our bylaws in the first place, like I said, were very ingenious in doing that because there is buy-in from the public side, there's buy-in from the private side, and we come together and really work hard together to make sure our positions and the and the uh, advocacy work that we do is well well established. We are we focus on the issues, like I said, that really affect the economic vitality of Washington County, and I'll tell you right at the top. The two issues that we focus on most are land use and transportation. Mm -hmm. And those are, those are the key issues that affect the economic development. That doesn't mean we don't get involved in a lot of other pieces, but those are the ones that I find myself writing the most letters about, I find myself being involved in the most. For example, when we talk about transportation, we, I sit on the West Side Transportation Study Group that meets um, every other month and we're looking, some of you may know it as the West Side Bypass Group, it really isn't. It's really looking at what all of the opportunities are for the, for the West Side in terms of transportation. I sit on that committee with Mark Freiberg, who's here with me this morning, um, and we'll, you know, we are looking at all the aspects, we're looking at different concepts in terms of what makes sense for the West Side. We are bringing in that group those concepts forward to the public, but in our transportation committee, if any of you would like to attend, you're welcome to attend next this coming Wednesday. We are going to be looking at those uh, concepts and providing comment back to the the group. I also sit on the uh, Region One Act for ODOT, which is the Area Commission on Transportation, and we look at how money is spent in relationship to the entire region from. Hood River out through the rural aspects of Washington County. So along with our transportation committee and the work that we do and the advocacy work that we do, whether it's at the regional level with Metro, whether it's at the state level with our state representatives when we're looking at a transportation package, or whether it's at the federal level, we are involved and we are actively looking at getting more money and effectively spending that money to ensure that we have transportation systems that allow us to get around, allow workers to get to work, and will allow, in my mind, one of the most important pieces is freight to market. That we have to make sure that we can ensure that companies that are looking to expand or looking to locate here are not worried about how the heck they're going to get their freight to market. Intel, over the last year and a half, has had to move their freight to market times an hour to an hour and a half earlier every day to make sure that they get their freight over to the airport or to whatever area that they're going to be uh, distributing from. That's really not acceptable. And we have to make sure that we have the right um, advocacy pieces in place and that we're pushing on our, legis on our elected leaders at all levels to ensure that we do have transportation addressed. What you're seeing here is just a, a whole uh, bunch of pictures. And there are pictures from our events so that, so that when you ask those questions, when you're in line, you uh, can talk about the things that, that we do. But I thought it would be fun for you to see visually some of the, the work that we do. When I t I've talked about transportation a bit, I'd like to talk a little bit now about our Government Relations Committee and the advocacy work that we do. We, when I came here last time, I talked to you about the the fact that we were kind of changing a little bit. You know, you get a new executive director and that person always has to assert themselves a little bit, right? Well, in my, in my asserting, it was around developing a government relations committee so that we could really leverage all the strength that we have in our membership when it comes to addressing the issues at hand. Um, I came to the job at, after 21 years at Pacific Power. I left Pacific Power as the vice president in charge of Oregon external affairs. So I had a lot of experience, but the reality is that the lobbying was done by people who worked for me. So when I came to this job, I'm thinking, hmm, you know, I don't know. I want to make sure that I get the right people in, in place. And it dawned on me that we already had great representation from our private sector, from our public sector, 
and in the the lobbying aspects of the work that we intended to do so why not bring all those people together and leverage that and that's what we've done we've had we've held our government relations committee with people like Mark Freiberg again from PGE we have people from Northwest Natural we have people from PCC we have um, individuals from all the hospitals in the area so we really have bench strength right in our committee structure to come forward and say this is what we believe in and this is how we're, we, we would like you to to proceed when it comes to transportation. Our, our meetings are held with our uh, elected leaders. We also meet down in Salem with our elected leaders. Uh, there's more than once a week that you'll find me over at Metro working on different issues and also members of our Government Relations Committee. In those committees, what we do is focus on the issues that our members are concerned about. And again, I said transportation and land use are primary issues. But we also find ourselves involved in issues like um, the, the two ballot measures that are coming up in Washington County, the library measure and the public safety measure. We feel very strongly that those are important to the economic vitality, again, of Washington County, and we intend to support those where we already have a piece that's going into the um, voters' pamphlet. We've been working in coordination with them, but that's because Washington County came to us and said, we need your support. The Government Relations Committee and the board both agreed that this is important. And when it comes to looking at issues, what we do do is say, okay, how does this affect the economic vitality again? Think of yourself right now. If, you're, if you own a business and you are looking at relocating into this area, there are many issues that you're going to be uh, thinking about in relationship to how does that region operate? How do they get their goods to market, like I mentioned? How do they treat their, um, their uh their citizens? Are they concerned about their public safety? Are they concerned about having libraries? What is their approach to education? Do they support their schools? Do they support their schools from the from K to, to 12 and beyond that? So if you're if you're locating a business, those are the things that you want to be thinking about. What does the workforce look like? Now that all is, is part of it. And then I, again, you're obviously looking at what is the tax base? What can I expect for in terms of return for employee uh, involvement and what, what do I have to pay for employees? All those types of things. But our job is to make sure that we continually present Washington County as strong in terms of supporting business and also um, valued, that our businesses are valued in this area. And we do that by advocating for different, different pieces. So, Again, sorting through the issues and where we should take a stand, though we look at the economic vitality, and frankly, for me, it's, okay, what would business say? How would business react to this? How would our citizens react to this? And that's how we come up with a position. Um, like I said, again, transportation, land use, but also all these other pieces. We, um, we actively support our educational uh, sector. We actively support our, uh, we have members, Beaverton School District is a member, Hillsborough School District is a member, Forest Grove School District is a member, and their members so that they can be involved with the businesses, we can have the discussions, and we, we can look to supporting what their issues are when they come for bond measures and those types of things. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We also, like I said, if you're, if you're bringing a business here, and you have to turn to your employees and say, we expect you to move here, and we expect you to, you know, we know you're going to be bringing your family, and we know you have a 10-year-old that's going into fifth grade. What type of school system is there here for that 10-year-old in fifth grade? So that's how I look at it. it. You know, aside from the fact that I am a former educator, I started my career as a PE and health teacher, so at events, if you hear me whistle, you'll know that I'm well informed on how to get people's attention. But um, the point is that I have a strong, and I didn't turn off my phone. Do you think, Spencer, you could turn off my phone for me? <laughs> That's one of the first rules, isn't it? We, you know, I, whenever I'm doing a, a presentation, I ask people, please silence your phones. Yeah. Just on the side there, thank you. So my, my apologies for that. So. So when it comes to government relations, like I talked about, we are we we really look toward what supports Washington County. We also have a very active 
Land Use and Housing Committee. Our Land Use and Housing Committee has been involved in a lot of different issues. Um, we've really focused a lot on the Metro work that's been going on on the uh, Urban Growth Report and how that informs the Urban Growth Boundary. We came out at the end of the process just about a month ago and we, were, we could not support the um, COO, the uh, Chief Operating Officer's position to accept the recommendations out of the UGR because we felt strongly that the UGR was, was misinformed by a lot of data that came into the report. We did support the process. We support Metro in terms of their transparency and how they've communicated with us, but we don't feel strongly that the UGR has got quality information in it. We also feel that the, that the, the, the COO's, uh, Martha Bennett's, recommendation was based on accepting other, uh, figuring out the urban reserve issue in Clackamas County before we can move forward on the urban growth issues in Washington County and we feel strongly that that is a separate issue and we should be moving forward on our own. So we don't always agree with our partners. We don't always agree with what they say or what, the, what their direction is, but we do, we do try, I always try to make sure that they recognize that we support the work that they in the intentional work that they're doing, the transparency around the work that they're doing, and uh, but we don't necessarily support the outcome. So, and I think that by by cooperating and working together in a um, partnership approach to the urban growth issues, we have a lot better chance in making things work in the long run. So our Land Use and Housing Committee has been focused on the urban growth report, but at the same time, last year about this time, we held a housing summit, and we talked at we worked on the housing summit in four different streams. We looked at what what are the issues around affordable housing. We looked at what are the issues around executive housing. We looked at what are the issues around land use and how does the the land use uh, work in relationship to housing. And we looked at the permitting side and how how the SDCs or the system development charges the transportation development fees, those types of things work in connection with development. What came out of that summit was that we, we felt very strongly that we needed to understand and take a position on affordable housing in Washington County. So this last August we held um, a bus tour and we went around with our land use and housing group with 30 people and visited several areas. We looked at first out in Hillsborough at a development that's new, and the development is, a, is focused on affordable housing. From there, we went to Aloha, and we looked at the Aloha par apartments out here, and looked at the rehab work that's been done there, and how that, how that work affects affordable housing, and the opportunity to, to have affordable housing, excuse me, in this area. Then from there we looked at Habitat for Humanity and understood what's going on in Beaverton at uh, quite a big development that they have, about six, six homes that are underway right there. We looked at that and learned about what their approach is and the last stop was out in Tigard at a senior center that's for affordable housing. The purpose in doing that was to, again, inform ourselves so that we can take a, a strong position in relationship to what the needs are in Washington County. We recognize that there are needs in affordable housing, but how can our organization leverage our membership and leverage the strength that we had, have from an advocacy level to improve the situation? So that's what we're working on right now. So again, our focus for a long time in land use had been around the UGB issues. That's what we hear about a lot out here. But we wanted to make sure that we were focusing as well on the housing issues. Oh, I'm so glad not to be the only one. Thank you. So, <laughs> so that's that's our land use and, and housing issue. The or excuse me, our land use and housing committee. We also have a committee that's focused on membership. When I first came on, we are, we were just coming out of the recession. Our membership levels were down. We had a really strong push on bringing new members in. We, you know, we, as, a, as a membership organization, you're always gonna have a strong push on bringing new members in. The first year we brought quite a few in. The membership committee is now focused not just on recruitment and retention, which is absolutely critical, but also most critically on member value. 
So I want to be able to talk to each and every one of our members, and I know there are several of you here in the room, who are focused on what value do you get out of, thank you very much. Excuse me, thank you, Mark. Cool. Time out, just for a minute. Thank you. So member value is, is what we're all about. You know, I better be able to talk to Marlis about what are, what, are the, what are the values for the Willamette Water Supply Project in relationship to uh, supporting WEA. What can we do for them and how can we work effectively? Marlis and I worked last week on bringing in uh, one of their, actually a financial guy, to talk about the Willamette Water Supply on our economic development bike tour of Tualatin and how effectively they are working to place that water supply pipe, if you will, along current construction and how that's working. So, you know, if I can help, if I can help Marlis and her team spread the word and be, um, and be an advocate for the work that's being done, I help her in her communication uh, approaches and making sure that people understand what's going on there. So back, back to member value. Those are the types of things that we do in relationship to to increasing the member value. But along with that, we have to look at what our programs are. So this past year, our breakfast forum is kind of our signature programs, if you will. We have a monthly breakfast forum, and we work very hard to make sure that those monthly uh, breakfast forums, you've probably seen pictures of them up here, are focused on issues that are interesting. You know, they're kind of like educational. You know, they're, they're information and education at the same time. But they also have to be frankly, entertaining. You know, nobody wants to come to something that's boring and sit around and listen, you know, for, for, for a breakfast. You know, that's not, that's not the best. But so we work hard to make sure that our breakfast forums are interesting, entertaining, and informative. So we work with our sponsors. We work with our presenters. We've had really good luck this past year in having great forums. We just had, um, last month, we just had Congresswoman Bonamici and Congressman Schrader come together, which was which was really very good. Unfortunately, Suzanne had to leave early, but uh, I was very impressed, and those of you that were there were probably also impressed with Congressman Kurt Schrader and his knowledge and his awareness of Washington County and what our needs are here, as well as his own district, which tends to be a little further east of us. Um, before that, we had Senator Wyden come, and he was he was great, but. We find that in working with their staffs ahead of time, I spend a lot of time working with the staff, explaining who our attendees are going to be. All of a sudden, uh, Senator Wyden's com comments are directed at the companies that are in the audience. Well, you, you know that didn't happen just by chance. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into that. We also had um, a, a really great program in the spring, which was all of the mayors that are members of WEA came and talked about their cities and uh, uh, Mayor Truax, Mayor uh, Clark, Mayor Cook, Mayor um, Willie and Doyle and Mayor Ogden. Actually, Mayor Ogden was not there. He couldn't make it. But the point is that we had a great interaction. And what my, my issue there was demonstrating to our audience how Washington County functions, which is frankly very, very different. And this is something I've learned in the last couple of years. The way this county functions is very different than the way other counties function, especially in our region. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. But I mean, all you have to do is, this, this, I know this is going to be publicized, but I'll go ahead and say that Clackamas County has its issues. I'm not sure that all Clackamas County mayors talk to one another and that the commissioners talk to the mayors or, or frankly to each other but and that's not not a surprise to anybody in Washington County that's not the case our mayors talk to each other on a monthly basis they know each other they know what each other's issues are and they work together for solutions they don't always like the solutions and there are always you know there may be issues but the reality is that we live and function in a, in a county that's pretty unique. We work, the, the commissioners work closely with the mayors. Again, they don't always agree, but they know where they stand with each other. And there's a high level of communication that occurs, which doesn't happen in all other counties across the country and frankly doesn't happen within our tri-county tri area. And those of us that do business in other parts of this region 
know that that's, that that's the case. So I wanted to make sure when we did that forum that we had the opportunity to showcase that relationship, the relationships that are built sideways between those mayors and between the commissioner, commissioners, as well as entertain and inform the, um, the audience. So that was, a, that was a big piece for us. The other thing that we try to do outside of our breakfast forums is hold events that are interesting and, um, in, again, informative. Just Friday, we had our second economic development bike tour. Well, I happen to be a cyclist, so you know, it was this is kind of my gig to to do to do bike tours, and we had a, we had a great time. Last year, we did a bike tour in Hillsboro, and we had four stops. On Friday. We had a bike tour in the Tualatin area. We had about 40 people. It's a really unique situation because we get to get on our bikes with people, the other people who like to be on bikes, and we ride from, we had four stops. We ride to each individual stop and learn about something that's going on from an economic development perspective at each one of the four stops. But the key is that we have a motorcycle support, police motorcycle support, we have police bicycle support, and if you want to feel special, boy, that does it for you. I'll tell you, you know, it's like the, the people in the cars were riding along and rolling down their windows and saying, what is this? Who is this? Is, is Barack Obama here? I mean, you know, because the, you know, all the lights are going and, and it was, plus it was a great, it's great fun to be able to see the countryside as you, as you go that way. But to give you an example, we stopped at 124th in, in uh, the Tualatin area and talked about the extension, Mayor Clark from Sherwood talked about the extension of 124th that's going south into Sherwood and then over to I-5. A key piece of the transportation process is right there. We had the representative, Justin Campbell? Carlton. Carlton, thank you. From uh, the Willamette Water Supply, project talking about how the water supply line follows that to save costs and what the impact is going to be. We also talked at that point, we had a representative from TriMet talking about the Southwest Corridor and the transportation issues from a transit view that are going to occur in that area, the new bus line that's going to be going in, how the transportation is working in Tualatin with a separate shuttle bus that's focusing there. <laughs> From there, we went up to LAM Research. LAM Research, you may not know much about LAM Research. I didn't until a few years ago. LAM Research supplies services and product to Intel for their chips. They have 1,200 employees on site in, in Tualatin. They have 600 employees on contract that they're trying to work into a permanent role. So they've got 1,800 employees and they're expanding in Tualatin. So this is, this is one of those uh, suppliers to Intel that we hear about. For every one job at Intel, there's three jobs. You've heard that saying before, out in the field. Well, there's, there's a high count right there. They came out and talked to us. We met on their front lawn, and we also heard about the, Tualat the city of Tualatin and their urban renewal district plan that developed that technology corridor there. From there, we went up to Tigard and learned about the Tigard issues. We got to ride the Fano Creek Trail along with our motorcycle entourage, up to uh, the city, new city hall in Tigard and listen to the economic development manager there about the uh, Tigard expansion and how they're creating a walkable city, what they're doing for quality of life there. And then back from there, we went down to look at a PAC Trust development and uh, how PAC Trust has uh, put their money from, from their investments into development in the Tualatin area and exactly what's happening in terms of um, availability. They, are, they, they don't have much space left. They are fully booked. Things are looking good. The economy is looking good for them in that area. We also looked at the new trail that's going to connect with Fano Creek Trail that will actually go under the freeway at the city of Tualatin and come up on the other side to connect the Tualatin River and the, and the uh, west, or excuse me, the east side of Tualatin with the west side. So these are the types of things that if we continue to educate our members and key people about, we will continue to get the type of support that we need to get for Washington County 
as we uh, move forward and try to keep that economic vitality high. So those are, those are examples of events that we hold along with the work that we do, again, in supporting uh, the uh, Willamette water supply work, in supporting the work that's going on right now in Hillsborough to try to um, look at the development of a new urban renewal district in the north side on the uh, in, on the property that's been brought in from the uh, urban growth boundary uh, expansion that happened in the Grand Bargain. So we're very involved in all of those types of issues. Most importantly, though, we have fun. And you can see from these pictures, one of my goals is that we better darn well have a good time while we're doing this. Whether it's a committee meeting and getting interesting speakers into our committee meetings, or if it's taking the board on a jet boat tour of the marine facilities for the Port of Portland. We went on a jet boat tour in September that started at OMSI, went all the way up to Hayden Island, looked at what what the closures have meant, what the, you know, what, what, what happens when a port doesn't have the types of facilities um, and active relationships with the people that they need to have open. We looked at Hayden Island. We talked about the development in Hayden Island and what's happened with the city of Portland and not working together as, as smoothly as we would like to develop that, that property for, for business usage. If we have informed board members, if we have people that can see what's going on on the ground and have a good time doing it, we're going to make better decisions in Washington County. That's why we have bike rides. That's why we go on kayak trips on the Tualatin River. That's why we do uh, breakfast forums that are interesting and entertaining. This next month, by the way, commercial break, we are having Grace Krunikin and Neil McFarland on November 13th. I just got the okay this morning from Grace's office. Grace is the former director of the Oregon Department of Transportation, moved from there up to Seattle and was um, the head of the Public Transit Authority in Seattle, is now the um, general manager of BART Bay Area Rapid Transit in San Francisco. And she is going to be speaking along with Neil McFarland about the future of transit and light rail. So we're really excited about that. We think she'll be great. We have a good sponsor for that event. So look forward to that on November 13th. I hope I see you there. Um, let's see, I think in terms of uh, what, what we see coming up, Frankly, one of the biggest issues that I'm working on that I haven't been able to crack yet is we need to work on our diversity in our organization. We need to work on, when I look out at the crowd at our breakfast forum, we don't have the best representation of the communities that we represent. And that's something that is in my mind, it's, on the, it's in front of our board. We're working with PCC, we're working with some others to look at how can we, how can we improve that. Um, I'm looking at starting an emerging leaders program for young people in Washington County. There are programs like that in Portland. We don't have that in Washington County. So we're looking at, I'm looking at uh, partnering with the uh, Chambers of Commerce in the area and developing that type of program. But we've got many other areas that we could focus on in terms of diversity and we need, we need to be doing that. So that's, that's on my list of things to do as we move forward. The next, the, the other pieces are continuing with the work that we're doing, continuing with the relationships that we're building, and leveraging the strength in the organization, as I mentioned before. So, may I go to questions now, Mr. President? <laughs> yes, Mr. President, thank you. Thank you very, very much for two things, for a wonderful check, presentation check. And, and giving us all that information about all the things that you guys are involved in. It's very exciting. And also for calling me Mr. President. <laughs> and we have our first questioner right here, Mr. First Vice President. <laughs> Thank you. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I get to ask you a question before you ask me a question. I want to know, are ducks? And how's your son feeling? Oh, his shoulder's very good. Thank you. Is it good? OK, well, I'm happy that he has a red shirt year, but uh, bring him back strong. We need him. Sorry for that. <laughs> You know, it never rains in Austin, but it sure did rain in that third quarter. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is not directly you know, on point to the organization, but, but it speaks to the things that you're thinking about. Um, how much bonded authority is there for transportation project in Oregon now, given all the various uh, acts and things that we've done over the last 15 or 20 years? Um, 
you know, I think it's almost two billion into prisons and PERS stuff for public employees and other types of things. Given that the highway transportation fund at the federal level is essentially unfunded, and uh, basically people aren't going to be accepting any taxes, increasing taxes in this area. So, how, how do you and the, and the organization um, visualize finding a source for even a limited uh, bypass option for Brax Cordius Pass or 219? Where can we, do you have any ideas where the funding could come from? That's a, that's a million dollar question, no pun intended. Um, and I appreciate the fact that uh, you're concerned about this as, as we all are. I think that, um, I think that we're gonna have to be looking at gas tax. I think, you know, there's, there's no question that, and it has to be a significant gas tax. I, I can tell you, frankly, you look at the state of Washington and what they did, they, um, we couldn't get agreement on a uh, Columbia River crossing, and that was primarily due to the Washington legislature. Our group was really pretty much there, you know, but we didn't have the Washington, uh, the state of Washington. And then this year, what is their gas tax now? I didn't they go to, did they go to 10 or 12? I'm not sure. It's amazing what they did for the Washington state side and not not for the for the the bridge. But I think we have the capability of getting there. I think I think that we are we've got to be looking at vehicle miles traveled. In other words, we've got to be looking at how do we get the right revenue from the people that actually use the roads. And with the advent of wonderful electric vehicles and uh, you know it's 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 wonderful for our environment, but we need to make sure that we're getting the right type of usage fees from those who use our roads. We also have to be looking at the registration um, issue, and I'm I was so sad to see that go down in the last election as well. We need to we need to be looking at how do we take care of our local roads and maintain our local roads, as well as looking at how do we develop from a statewide perspective the future roads. But I really believe it's going to be in user fees. Follow up since there's a sure. person there. Um, Representative Wheeler came, I mean, Treasurer Wheeler came and spoke to us last year. He said that he didn't think there was not damaging the current bond status of Oregon um, long term bonds. And given the problem worldwide with the excess of bonds on the market, um, that he didn't think that basically we had much margin for state bonding authority. So you're thinking of it coming essentially. Uh, uh, access uh, uh, access to funds from the gas tax on almost as an overhead type of situation. Right. Yeah, and I and I would say that um, State Treasurer Wheeler that was why he didn't support the um, Columbia River crossing. You know, and we know that. The other thing that I personally believe is that I think as a as a whole west side of the country, we need to be understanding what it means to toll our roads. You know, for those of you that spend any time on the East Coast, you know, it's, it's, it's just a given. You drive along and you pay for the right to drive on, on a certain road. You could have the opportunity to go on a different road if you want to go a little slower, go through other lights. I do think that that's something that we are going to have to be looking at as, as a community at large. And I think that there are lessons to be learned within our own country on how effectively that can be, that can operate. Um, it's not something that you know makes me happy. Doesn't make any of us happy. But I think we have to look at how how can we effectively get through, get get from A to B in our own communities. So um, yeah, I was fortunate. Excuse me, just a minute. I was fortunate enough to be on, on vacation last uh, just this last month in Europe. And the tolling situation, it reminded me exactly of being on the New Jersey Turnpike. It's exactly the same. You know, you, you pay for it and, and it's there. So I think to some degree, our community at large, again, the western part of the United States, is um, behind on how we, can, how we can finance these types of things. So I'd add that to the discussion. Just one sec. We are working with a new sound system. And would the questioners please either hold the mic or make sure that they're talking close to the mic really close so that to the folks mic, at the back can hear? Excuse me and thank you. Hi, uh, Phil Nelson, for member. And I have a, a question about the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement and if your organization has taken any formal position on whether or not to support that. Uh, obviously, it's fairly contentious. Yes. And I can tell you that we have 
And it has not been, and frankly, it has not been an issue that has been raised at our Government Relations Committee. That doesn't mean that it shouldn't be something that's raised and discussed at our Government Relations Committee, but I have a member, again, of, of our committee here, and it has not been something that our members have asked us to take a position on. And I do want to underscore that we are a member-driven organization, and when I get a request for supporting, you know, an issue, it comes from our membership. The other thing that I want to clarify in relationship to our Government Relations Committee so that you all know is that we, because we have elected members on our Board of Directors, we have agreed not to take a position on individual races. So we do not come out in support of a candidate, but we do come out in support of measures as requested by the membership. Thank you. Um, Jim Cape, for member. Last decade, Jonathan Schluter spoke to the forum when he, when he was with the West Side Economic Alliance. And when he was asked about the annexation meltdown, he said it was too controversial and complex to discuss, that he needed to study the issue. He sat on his hands. And then the Beaverton Area Chamber of Commerce chose poorly and picked the losing side of the Nike case and picked the losing side of the attempted condemnation of private property for a Beaverton minor league baseball stadium. Yet no one was held accountable. No one apologized. Jonathan Schluter is now the county lobbyist. So why is it that Washington County business groups are never held accountable for their political blunders? Thank you. Hmm. I think the question, the end of the question was why are Washington County business associations not held accountable for their mistakes? Is that, okay. Um, well, first of all, it's hard for me to answer for an issue that addresses Jonathan. I, I, I respect Jonathan. I think he did a great job in many ways. I can tell you, just to shed a little bit of light on, and I'm not sure if this is pertinent to, to the issues that you brought up, but there are some times when Westside Economic Alliance publicly states we will not take a position on this because we have members on both sides of this issue. And there is a, we can't come to an agreement on this issue, so therefore we are not going to take a position. I don't know if that was the case on, on the issues that you raise. Um, I can tell you that I feel strongly about taking responsibility for the positions that we do take. Um, I don't believe that we have taken, a, since I've been here, a position that we haven't, you know, we haven't supported. We haven't always been on, on the winning side of a decision, but that doesn't mean it was the wrong decision for the organization to make. You don't agree? Okay. Well, perhaps we can talk after the meeting. Chris Leslie, former member, thank you for a very informative speech today. This is, my question is more like this is a Chamber of Commerce for Washington County. That's the way I look at it. And how do you uh, work with the Junior Chamber of Commerces and encourage small business to become members? Well, thank you for your question. And I, I, we are frequently described as kind of the yeah, kind of the, the larger Chamber of Commerce for Washington County. Um, there's there's two questions in that. I can tell you that I work very very closely with all of the chambers of commerce in Washington County. Uh, Deanna Palm and I from um, Hillsborough work on a lot of issues together. One issue that I didn't really talk about too much here is workforce, and she's very involved in workforce development, partly because of her role at the chamber, but also as president of the PCC um, board of directors. Um, I just. I, I was just elected to the executive committee of WorkSource, um, uh, WorkSource Inc., and we are you know, we are very involved in um, workforce issues. And I should have said Work Systems Inc. Excuse, excuse me. Uh, so Deanna and I work closely on a lot of issues. I work. I was just with Linda Molhold from uh, Tualatin. She was very involved in our bike event, and I. I want you to know that whenever there is an event that we're focused on in an area where the chamber is involved, they are, they are involved. So they're part of our organization and we, we all work together on, on issues. As far as the small business engagement, 
My view of membership at uh, Westside Economic Alliance is I want to work with each single potential member and ask them, do you see value in what we do? And do you, and that's how, the small business is the, is the group that makes the decision. They individually make the decision if they see value in what we do. They don't always see value, and I understand that. And I would then work with Deanna or with Linda or with uh, Lorraine Clarno in Beaverton and figure out if, they, if they're a member there and do they see value there. Frankly, our, we do not focus on business to business referral. So if you're looking at a, um, uh, you know, a dental office and a, a, a chiropractic office, they would not find value necessarily in us because they're, they're not sharing business contacts and sharing business across ways. And we're very open about that. But if, they, but if it's a group that looks at um, what can they do to improve their freight to market timing, what can they do to improve um, housing issues, then, then we have a lot of commonality. So it's really on a one-by-one -one basis that we talk. And, it's, and my, my personal responsibility is to make sure that that potential member or member sees value in the membership here at WEA. Hi, Virginia Bruce, forum member. Um, you started talking about how unique Washington County is, but what I didn't hear you say is what makes Washington County really unique, which is our huge population that's not served by cities. That's right. And you guys uh, focus a lot on cities and mayors and, and hearing what they have to say. And those of us who live in the urban unincorporated area have vast diluted representation mm -hmm. considering that we have five commissioners for all of the I've heard that the, we'd be the third largest city in Oregon if we were all one city. I don't know if that's true but I... Yeah, and um, I just wonder have you done, has there been any study of that? What is the, the group's position on that? And also can you guys put pressure on the county to do a better job of economic development for those urban unincorporated areas. Um, it's pretty widely recognized that the citizens of the UUAs are not suddenly going to wake up one morning and say, we want higher taxes, we want to be in a city. It's just not going to happen in our lifetimes. And the county's doing, slowly doing things to, to address the issue. But I just wondered what you guys can do as your forum. I also have one quick comment we when you talk about off. diversity. Virginia, stop. You've just, got two questions. Got it's two not questions a question. Standing. She's I, asking about diversity. 7.30 meetings and golf do not make me feel welcome. Well, let's talk about the um, let's talk about the uh, unincorporated Washington County question. And I can tell you that um, I'm very well aware of the unincorporated Washington County issues. Uh, I am mostly aware that, frankly, through my work on the um, Region 1 Area Commission on Transportation, because that is, a, that is an area where we focus a lot on what, what the unincorporated area's needs are, and it's becoming more and more clear to me how we need to focus there. We need to focus on agriculture. We need to, we need to understand what the issues are in ag as well as the unincorporated areas. So um, I can tell you that it's on the radar. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a unified voice that has talked to us, frankly. So if there's a, if there's a voice that, that would like to come in and talk with me, I'd be more than happy to do that. Hello, Mark. Hello, thank you again. I, I wanted to just elaborate a little more on what is, I, I've been in public policy work now for, well, I'll admit it, 44 years, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it just amazes me what you described here about how the local governments and the business community do get along, which is expressed very often at the WEA and a lot of other uh, business organizations, including the chambers. If I was to come to you, let's from a distant county or out of state and say, what did they do? How did they pull this off? What would you say the main factors are, or did it just happen? That's a good question, Mark. And I, um, I think that there are many people in this room that have been involved in Washington County politics a heck of a lot longer than I have. 
and you could probably all answer this question more effectively than I can, but I think that the major issue is that we have elected leaders that are truly public servants right now. I think we have elected leaders that have a level of tolerance that isn't always seen. And I think that there was a level of dysfunction at the county level that it pre-existed probably in the 2006, five, seven era that nobody wanted to revisit. So my, my feeling is that it's a combination of things. And I think that we also have businesses that have worked very closely, Intel, Nike, large, large companies, Columbia Sportswear, uh, and I'm just calling out the really big ones right now, that have had communication with the counties and with the cities and been able to feel like their voice is being heard. So I would say that that's probably the, the primary issue. And frankly, I'd say that nobody wants to have the problems that are existing right now in Clackamas County, and there's an awareness that that's going on. And so it's like, well, we don't want to be like that, so let's make sure that we're talking around the table, whether it's Washington County Coordinating Council, where they talk about transportation issues, whether it's the mayors that meet once a month independently, or whether it's around our table at WEA board meetings. Thank you, Mark. Chris Wesley, former member, a double dipper. Uh, I'm just trying to understand how are you supported? What's your budget? And mm -hmm. how do you uh, pay salaries? Things like that. Sure, be happy to. Um, our, our budget is open to anybody who would like to take a look. We run about $300,000 in uh, 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 annual budget. Our our money comes from our membership activities mostly and it's membership dues and so and we we basically just about break even on our forums. We make maybe four or five hundred of a forum, not very much, and we lose on a couple of them. So our we have a fundraiser, our golf tournament, and that's the golf that you see up there. That's an annual golf tournament that we hold that raises we, we gross about $55,000 on that, net around 30 something, and that really helps. It's about 10% of our overall budget. So that gives you an idea we have, I am a full-time paid staff. I have one other full-time uh, paid employee, that's Mary Quinn, she's the office manager. And I have a three-quarter time uh, marketing and communications person, Teresa Dunham. And we are paid at kind of normal nonprofit rates. You know, it's a, you know, so that, that kind of tells you. So, uh, but that's, uh, uh, the majority of our overhead is um, uh, staff expenses. Our office is actually donated to us by KG. They're a, a real estate company in the Tigard area. So we have no overhead when it comes to office space. And we have very old furniture. <laughs> so so that, that kind of gives you a picture. Our expenses are mostly around supporting uh, events and um, you know doing doing things that promote the um, the message that we're trying to get out are you a member of the forum well we just agreed we actually have a special classification of membership for nonprofits where we pay fifty dollars to the nonprofit and the nonprofit pays fifty dollars back to us so it's a wash but we're both members and so we were just talking about that today so Thank yes you. go ahead if it's quick yeah, Jim Cape, four member. Sorry to ask us a second question, but you said the unincorporated areas aren't speaking. Um, I said they're not. I don't have a unified voice that I am personally talking to. Okay, that's the same thing Jonathan Schluter said last decade. I mean, it was proven with the annexation meltdown. 99.99% of annexation meltdowns result in massive forced annexation. How did it not happen in Washington County? Because people stood up. Businesses stood up property owners stood up. So why isn't the West Side Economic Alliance listening to the unincorporated area citizens, property owners, and business owners? Because Thank no you. one is talking to me directly. I, and, I'll, and I'll be very honest about that. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to, to say that I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not giving you an excuse. I'm telling you that I have not had communication directly regarding this issue. And I, and if, if we did, it would go right to the Government Relations Committee, and we would be discussing it there. And I'm being very honest with you right now. Um, this, I, I've not heard from you. 
I have not heard previously from Virginia. And, you know, I'm a very responsive person when it comes to these types of issues. And you can shake your head, but that's really true. Um, and I'd be more than willing to discuss the issues with our county commissioners. I have a very close relationship with all of the commissioners. I work, I work very closely with them. And am more than willing to talk about, you know, how can we continue to make Washington County the best place to live, to grow a business, and to raise our ch children and our families. Thank you. Pam, thank you very much, Pam. Really appreciate it. You handled some tough questions, I think, very well. And if I may just add, in case people didn't hear it, this lady is open. Her ears are open. I happen to live in unincorporated Washington County, too, so careful. I might talk at so you. So do I. <laughs> okay. Well, then I think there's really key important people living in that portion of the county. Once again, thank you very, very much. Very Ladies and gentlemen, next, uh, oh, a real quick announcement for the board. For those of you that are here, we have a an incredibly brief board meeting for five minutes at the close of this just to accomplish one particular thing the board needs to do. Um, I'm also going to give a quick shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out to Hey, Hillsborough Empowers Youth. We happen to have their president sitting over here to my left. If Jaime Rodriguez would wave, Jaime, wave. Yeah, he's spoken to us before, and it's just nice to see him. Ladies and gentlemen, next week we will be exposing all of our members and guests to historical treasures of Oregon. Carrie uh, Timchuk from the Oregon Historical Society will be with us next week. That's same time, same station, next Monday. We'll see you. Thanks for being here, guys. Bye-bye.